What's up everybody, this is Endo, and welcome to the final part of my series on Tractor DJ for the iPad. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you my favorite feature using Tractor DJ for the iPad. It's called Metadata Sync. What Metadata Sync lets me do is if I'm a Tractor Pro user, I can actually set my cue points and loops on the iPad using Tractor DJ, and then when I open up Tractor Pro on my computer, all of the cue points and loops will magically show up inside of my tracks in Tractor DJ. Now the way that this works is over Dropbox. So basically, if I have a Dropbox account, you can register for your free account on dropbox.com, I can install the Dropbox app on my Mac and also on my iPad. And I'm also gonna log in to Dropbox on both systems. So basically what's happening is anytime I make a change on a track in Tractor DJ on the iPad, it's gonna send those changes to Dropbox and then Tractor Pro is going to take that information from Dropbox and put it in the Tractor software. So what kind of information is being sent between the two systems? Now metadata sync between the two systems means that it's syncing things like cue points, loops, BPM information, key information, and also beat grid information. So anytime I make a change to a cue point, loop, or beat grid on my computer, it's going to be sent to Tractor DJ. And anytime I change anything on Tractor DJ, such as cue points, loops, save loops, anything like that, it's going to be sent to Tractor Pro. And this is all done over Dropbox. All right, so here's how everything's connected. First of all, I want to make sure that I'm sharing the same iTunes music library with Tractor. And also, I'm going to sync my iTunes with my iPad. So I'm sharing the same iTunes library between both programs. Now, one of the most common questions I get is, well, what if I don't have my whole entire iTunes music library on my iPad? That's no problem. Basically, as long as you're sharing the same iTunes library between the systems, what's going to happen is Tractor DJ is going to look at what I have on my iPad for music. It's also going to look at what I have in my Tractor track collection and the iTunes music library on my computer, and it's going to reference everything together. So any tracks that I have on my iPad, it's going to get the Tractor information through Dropbox. So as soon as I put any tracks on my iPad, all that information is going to be there. And if I add new tracks, all the information is on the iPad ready to go. Now to get everything running properly, we're going to make sure that we're on the latest version of Tractor and also on the latest version of iTunes. Now, the version of Tractor you want to use is version 2.6.1 or above. You can download the latest update of Tractor by going to the Native Instruments Service Center located in Applications, Native Instruments, or you can go on the Native Instruments website, native-instruments.com, and go to Support, Updates, Downloads, and choose your version of Tractor and your operating system. Now before we sync our collections, we just want to make sure that everything's set up properly and all the right settings are configured. So first I'm going to make sure that iTunes opens inside of Tractor. To do that, I'm going to click on the iTunes icon inside of Tractor. And if everything's working okay, when I double click on the iTunes icon, you'll see all my playlists. If the playlists don't show up and it says your iTunes library isn't set up, you can configure it by going to Preferences, File Management, and then click on the iTunes Music Library icon, and this is where you can find your iTunes Music Library. Now, for most people, your iTunes Music Library is going to be located in Music, iTunes, and what you're going to do is double-click on the XML file called iTunesMusicLibrary.xml to point Tractor to iTunes. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into iTunes and make sure all my settings are configured correctly there. So if I go to iTunes, you can see that I have my iPad icon over here. If I click on that, I can configure the settings for my iPad. Now, one really important thing to note before we set everything up is that you want to make sure that you have the original versions of the songs on your iPad. Now, there's a few settings that we're going to need to configure to make sure of this. First thing is we want to make sure that we're sending the high quality versions from your iTunes to your iPad. The other thing is we want to make sure that iTunes Match is turned off, also that Automatic Downloads is turned off, and we want to make sure that iTunes is not copying our music files to its own special folder where it organizes them by artist because this can cause missing files and doubled files in your collection. 
So let me just really quickly show you how to set up all of these options correctly. First, I'm going to go to iTunes. I want to make sure that my iPad is connected via USB. And I'm going to click on the iPad icon. And in the Summary tab, I'm going to want to make sure that the option called Convert Higher Bitrate Songs to 128 kilobytes per second. We want to make sure that's turned off. Because if we're DJing at clubs, we want to play the high quality versions of our songs. And 128 is really low, so I wouldn't even want to listen to that anyway. So turn that off. So next thing we're going to do is go to the Music tab. And I'm going to make sure that Sync Music is turned on. And then I can either choose if I want to sync my entire music library or if I only want to sync selected playlists, artists, albums, and genres. So I'm going to choose selected playlists and everything. Now, this is a great way to actually set up a whole new track organization system on my iPad. So basically, I'm going to choose all of the crates that I want to send to Tractor DJ. I'm going to make sure there's a checkbox next to them. You can see that I have some genre playlists and I have like my gig playlist down here sending to my iPad. So all those playlists are going to appear when I open Tractor DJ after I've synced my collections over USB. Now that's another thing. You want to make sure that you sync your collection over USB and not iTunes Match because what iTunes Match does is it's actually sending low quality, actually different files to your iPad. You want to make sure again that you're sending the same files between the two. So we're going to turn off iTunes Match by going to the Store Preferences and we're going to make sure that Turn On iTunes Match is off. The other thing that we're going to want to make sure is turned off is automatic downloading. We're going to want to do this on your computer and your iPad. So if I go to iTunes Preferences, to the Store tab, I'm going to make sure that the Music checkbox is turned off. Now the other thing is we don't want iTunes copying our files to its own iTunes folder. So we're going to want to turn this off by going to Preferences, Advanced. We're going to make sure that Keep iTunes Media Folder Organized and Copy Files to iTunes Media Folder when adding to Library is turned off. Now, some of you might actually be accustomed to a system of this. So if you've already been using Copy Music to iTunes Folder and Keep iTunes Music Folder Organized, if you've been using that system and importing into Tractor that way, then fine, keep it. If you haven't, turn it off. Now we're also going to want to turn off automatic downloads and iTunes Match on our iPad. To do this, we can click on Settings, Music, make sure iTunes Match is turned off. Also in the iTunes and App Store settings, we're going to want to turn off automatic downloads for music. All right, so now that everything's set up in iTunes on the iPad, all of our settings are set up correctly, let's do our metadata sync between Tractor DJ and Tractor Pro. Now it's recommended to first set everything up on Tractor DJ on the iPad and then set up Tractor Pro. So in Tractor DJ, to set up our Dropbox sync, we're going to swipe open the browser. Then we're going to go to the Preferences, which is the gear icon at the bottom. I'm going to click on Dropbox. And then I'm going to click on the Link Dropbox Account button. And I'm going to make sure that Dropbox Sync is turned on by swiping my finger to the right. And then I'm going to click Sync Now. So to set up Metadata Sync in Tractor Pro, I'm going to click on the gear icon to go to the Preferences. Then I'm going to click on Metadata Sync. And I'm going to turn on Enable Meta Sync via Dropbox. Then I'm going to click on the Active Click to Sync button. Now the next step is really important. For your first sync, Tractor is going to ask me if I want to keep my Tractor information or overwrite it. Now, if I've done a lot of work on my Tractor Pro collection, I'm going to want to make sure to turn Keep on. If I choose Overwrite, all of my information like cue points, beat grids, and everything is going to be overwritten in Tractor Pro. So be careful about doing this. So I'm going to choose Keep. So if you're a longtime Tractor Pro user and you're just getting started with Tractor DJ, you're going to want to choose Keep. So all of our Tractor Pro information is sent to Tractor DJ. If you've been using Tractor DJ for a long time and you're just starting with Tractor Pro, you can choose Overwrite. So all of my stuff that I've done in Tractor DJ is now transferred to my Tractor Pro computer. Now here's how the syncing works. If I close Tractor DJ, Tractor DJ is going to automatically send all the Tractor information to Dropbox. Also, if I click on the Home button or if I switch applications on my iPad, Tractor DJ is also going to send the information to Dropbox. Now, on Tractor Pro, 
If I want to manually sync, I can go to the gear icon, which is the preferences. I can go to the metadata sync tab and click on active, click to sync. That'll send and receive all the Dropbox information. So let's check out how that works. I'm going to load a song into a deck. And then I'm going to set some cue points in the song and maybe even save a loop. Now I'm going to send all of this tractor information to Dropbox by going to the iTunes icon, Preferences, Dropbox, and then click on Sync Now. Now once Tractor DJ is done syncing, you're going to see a little pop-up notification in the upper right hand side of my screen saying that Dropbox received the information, and there it is. And then I'm going to go to my Tractor Preferences and click on the active click to sync button. Now when I load this song into a deck, you're going to notice that all the cue points in the loop that I just set are inside of the track. So I just showed you guys how to manually sync over the two systems, but like I said, to automatically sync, all you have to do is close Tractor DJ, everything's going to be uploaded to Dropbox, and now when I open the Tractor Pro software, everything's going to show up in Tractor Pro, so you don't even have to think about it. So one of the advantages of Tractor DJ, if you're already a Tractor Pro user, is you can actually use Tractor DJ with an external sound card, such as the Tractor Audio 6 or Tractor Audio 10. Now to get this to work, you're going to have to download the firmware updater from the Native Instruments website and update the firmware of your Tractor Audio 6 or Audio 10. Now also, any other sound card that's iOS compatible will also work with Tractor DJ. So to download the firmware for the Audio 10, I'm going to go to tinyurl.com slash audio6 firmware. That's just a shortcut I made to get to the Native Instruments website, but you can see the link at the top. Now I'm going to click on the device updater to download it. Now with my Audio 10 connected to my computer via USB, I'm going to open the device updater and update my firmware. Now when I open my device updater, you can see that the newest firmware is version 48. Currently I'm on version 46, so I'm just going to click update and my computer is going to update the firmware for my Audio 10. Okay, when that's updated, you see now that I'm on version 48, I can exit the device updater. Now that we've updated the firmware on our Audio 10, I'm going to connect the Audio 10 to my iPad. I can do that using the camera connection kit that you can get at the Apple Store. I'm connecting a USB cable from the Audio 10 into the camera connection kit. And also remember that we have to have our audio interface powered, whether it be the Tractor Audio 6 or Audio 10. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my audio settings inside of Tractor DJ. I can do that by clicking on the iTunes icon. Then I'm going to click on the gear icon to go to the preferences. Now you're going to see that I have a new tab called audio setup. This is where I can set the output. Now I'm going to set the outputs for the master out, which is everything that's all mixed together. And then I'm also going to set the output for the monitor output. This is where I can cue or pre-listen to a track before I start mixing it in. So I'm going to set the master output to output 1 and 2 and I'm going to set the monitor output to output 1 and 2 as well. So now with this setup, I can actually plug my headphones into the headphone jack of the Audio 10 and I can pre-listen to the tracks. So now that we've set up our outputs, if we want to pre-listen to a track, we can actually click on one of these headphone icons here. So if I want to listen to deck A, I turn the headphone icon on for deck A. If I want to listen to deck B, I turn the headphone icon for deck B. We also have volume control here at the top. We have our master volume. We also have our Q volume and our Q mix. So if the Q mix is to the left, we're only hearing what's inside the headphones. And if the Q mix is on the right, we're going to hear only the master out. And if it's in the middle, you're going to hear a mix of what's selected with the headphone icon and the master out. So that's how to configure your audio settings in Tractor DJ to use a professional audio interface for the program. So now professional DJs can show up at the club and have professional audio and also be able to pre-listen to their tracks while they're mixing. Hope you guys enjoyed the videos. To learn more about DJing, be sure to check out our online digital DJing course with myself and DJ Shifty. For more videos, stay tuned to our DubSpot YouTube channel and DubSpot.com. For more info about me, check out DJendo.com. Peace.
Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.